that we have in effect been sort of blessed the last six to 10,000 years with a relatively stable climate. And I'm gonna show you some graphs here that, that really will blow your mind, um, that, that really will, will, will underscore how significant some of these changes have been, how profound some of them have been. And once we, kn once we know that and begin to incorporate that into our thinking, we realize we're gonna have to kind of reevaluate our, our models of, of prehistory. Okay, well, you, we have a new setup now. So with the TriCaster, we're going to allow Randall to take control of the situation here. If you're <laughs> just listening to this, this might be one of those podcasts where if you're one of those people that listens to it on a commute, you might want to go back and check out the, uh, well, Vimeo or YouTube or those are the ones that Ustream is going to give you a HD now too, right? Mm -hmm. we, we do, a, some people don't even know, we do a HD video of this <clears throat> podcast as well, so... What is this uh, oxygen isotopes in Greenland? Oxygen isotopes in Greenland, yeah. What we're looking at here, this goes back to the early 90s when, um, you know, glaciologists and paleoclimatologists, guys who study ancient climate, extracted these ice cores from the summit of Greenland. And the reason they went to the summit was because they were looking for the most undistorted ice core record that they could find. Previous uh, ice core extractions had been near the perimeter of the, of the ice sheets, and, and, and there the ice flow is, is much more dynamic, so um, there was more distortion in the record. So what they did was they went to the very center. There was a European team and an American team. And without getting into the, into the background, basically the, the ice sheet there was almost two miles thick. It took them oh. five years to drill through. It two was Two miles thick. Yes, yes. Just think about how far, like looking, how far two miles away is. Like what is a plane? A plane's a mile in the air? No, no. Well, a jet's going to be about 30,000 feet. What's but, a but mile? 35,000 feet? A mile. Now, you got to remember this because it's going to be an important okay. number. 5,280 feet. Is a mile. Is a mile. Right. Oh. Now, the tallest building in downtown L.A. is probably not over 800 feet, 1,000 feet at the most. No. Um, I'm not sure. I did look it up at one point what the tallest building was. I don't remember what, what it was. I know the tallest building in Atlanta is 1,060 feet. And, um, you know, two miles, you'd have to think of 10 of those stacked on top right. of each other to get a two-mile thick sheet of ice. That's, that's an amazingly huge mass of ice. Right. <clears throat> right. And, and, and that's pretty much the summit of Greenland. Right, wow. and what what we're looking at on this on this graph here, if you if you go down the left side of the graph, this is it's the surface, and then down here this 1500 you see right at the bottom that's 1500 meters, right? 1500 meters, you figure there's about 3.28 feet per meter, so that's going to be 45. It's going to be yeah close to 5,000. So this is this is 1500 meters times roughly a mile. Yeah, a little less than a mile. Over here on the right. Is, is the time in thousands of years before the present. So as you go down right there, there's a thousand years. You go down, there's 2,000. Down at the bottom, you see 10. So that's 10,000 years ago. Now, basically, what, what the oxygen isotopes do, they're a proxy for temperature change adjacent to the ice mass, right? And if you look at this, these are snapshots basically taken like every 10 years. Right? And what you see here is that the, is that the temperature is oscillating back and forth back and forth. It's uh, two to four degrees centigrade. Now, to put this into context, the concern, you know, we, we got into this somewhat last time, the whole issue of global warming. And, and I know that in, in some of the, um, the feedback we got, some of the, the most critical comments came from people who didn't like me undermining this whole concept of global warming induced catastrophe, right? Right. Well, what we see here, though, is clearly that the that the climate this is the 10,000 years that we're talking about here is called the Holocene by geologists it's oscillating back and forth two to four degrees centigrade every every 10 20 30 years right so we're we're talking about a degree that has changed basically in the last century to a century and a half right which which really almost wouldn't even show up here you see but we're going down as we go down we'll see if, as you go to the right that means temperature is warming as you go to the left it means it's cooling right and so as we go back down this is through the Holocene we're going through here and if you look there's some interesting stuff going on right here at about 8,200 years ago there's a really there's a spike of cooling right there and that was very very significant cooling I mean that was probably uh, caused the, the glaciers worldwide to start growing again for a short for a couple of centuries after they had basically disappeared at the end of the Ice Age so th this was a, a very um, 
significant event right here. And then as we get down right here at 10,000, you see it starts deviating to the left. It starts deviating to the cooler. 